So it's time to do the brakes, and uh, so I took, uh, put it up on jacks, took all the drums off, um, and at first everything looked pretty good. It just needed, looked like it needed to be adjusted. I didn't see a lot of leaks or any really obvious problems. The brake fluid is really dark and needs to be changed, but that's pretty straightforward. But I'm going to come over here and actually it's interesting. We should look at these brakes because they're really, for me anyway, they're pretty unusual. If you look on the left and the right, you can see that each wheel has two brake cylinders, two slave brake cylinders. And that's the way Land Cruisers are, and um, I think it's weird, but it is what it is. Um, each one of these has a piston that goes in one direction. So if you look at this one where the adjuster is, that, that pushes up. And if you look at this one on the bottom, that one pushes down. And this the other side is fixed. And what I've discovered is that the self-adjuster's on about half of these. So there's eight wheel cylinders, uh, brake cylinders on, on on the vehicle, and about half of them, the adjusters don't work. They're rusted up, and I can't move them, which means I can't adjust the brakes. And I'm going to try again with some um, penetrating oil and see if I can get them to break loose. A couple of them I have that way, but I'm beginning to think it would be best to just change them all out for all new ones. Okay, I'm going to try and show... The problem with the adjusters not being work, not working right, being uh, frozen up, and also I should point out that these self adjuster these aren't self adjusters. These are brakes you would have to adjust yourself once or twice a year, and um, right now you can't because the you can see the adjusting mechanism here is is all rusted up, barely moves. I can barely move it. And I've discovered the problem is corrosion down here under the rubber boot. So I'm going to remove this rubber boot and try and fix this with it still on the vehicle by getting some penetrating oil in here and let it sit for a while and see if that helps. See, there's quite a lot of rust. And I'll put the video on pause there and we'll make another one in a few minutes, see if it does any good. Well, I haven't had a lot of luck. It's been about 15 or 20 minutes and I've been working it back and forth and applying more penetrating oil and I've barely made any progress. It's still far too stiff. So I think the next step here is to, I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this stuff, take the brake linings out, um, disconnect the brake lines, take the brake cylinders out, and um, go ahead and put them in a vise where I can have a closer look at them and maybe get them apart. And if I really, I'm getting close to thinking I won't have many choices but other to replace the whole, replace them all. Um, I was shopping online for some last night and they're kind of hard to find. They're, um, the ones I could find were about a hundred dollars a pair for one side. So I'm hoping I can refurbish these but I'm not sure. The ones in the front are ready to go but it looks like these ones in the back are much rustier and um, haven't been apart in a much longer time. So maybe new ones are in order. I'm not sure. Next step is to get all this stuff out of here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take the brake shoes off now. Um, these are a little different than like normal or the American brake shoes I'm used to. There's no retaining clips up here to, to remove. There's just a spring in the back here that runs, the one in the back runs behind the shoes. And the one over here that you probably can't see is running in front of the shoes and that's it. That's all that holds them on. But oddly enough, it, they're kind of tricky. At least I think they're tricky to take off. So I guess you're going to watch me struggle for a little while getting these brake shoes off.
Okay, I guess that wasn't so bad. Brake shoes are off. Now, before we move on to taking the uh, brake cylinders off, I thought I should show you a detail here, which is these brake shoes and the uh, brake cylinders. There's a wide gap and a narrow gap. And the shoes have a wide end and a narrow end. So when they go back together, this one's going to be on the top. That's where it came from before. And the wide end goes in the front and the narrow end goes in the back. Um, it, it's not really obvious. You can put them together backwards. It makes the brakes all floppy so they don't work right. Oh, and one last thing here I should point out, which is that the, back, the springs in the back go behind the shoe. So I should say like that. This would be the bottom. And that helps. You've got to put this one in first. It helps uh, hold the shoes flush against the backing plate. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and set up the camera, I think, somewhere in the back here so I can maybe show you the process of getting the brake lines and the uh, cylinders off. They're really rusty. I think you're going to probably watch me struggle some more when we get to that. Okay, it's just too hard to find a place to put the camera where you can see everything. And so I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do before I do it instead. I'm going to start by removing It'll focus this banjo nut back here, which is the front wheel cylinder brake line. And then there, you can see in the shadows there, there's four bolts. And then on the other side here, get my fingers out of the way, there's another sort of like elbow that really I'm going to need to remove the main brake line that goes back to the axle here. And um, Probably both of them I'll have to remove in order to spin that elbow out. And then again, four, four bolts to remove the actual cylinder.